Here I am at the site of the earthquake at Metropolitan Seafood. They're having a sale on fish. Come on down. The fish fell all over the floor. So come down and get a good deal on some fish. I'm getting some fried calamari, uh, New England clam chowder, and maybe uh, some shrimp scampi. Lebanon, New Jersey, baby. This is where it's at. Welcome. Episode 43. That made me feel right at home. I, I wanted to give you that because I, I wanted you to... I know it, it probably was painful being so far away from home. Oh, yeah. When everybody was experiencing the earthquake last week. I know it's old news for everybody, but I, I just had to save that because it happened like, I don't even remember what day. And, Friday? And with all that New Jersey's been through, it's uh, all the revenue from this show is going to relief efforts in, in New Jersey from the earthquake. Uh, we are stronger than the storm. I wonder if that's true, though. If this guy's, if the seafood place he was at had fish all over the floor and stuff. No way. You don't think so? So you think he was kidding? I think it, it shook some stuff, but there's no way everything fell out. And even then, like, why can't they just put it back? Yeah, pick up the fish. Pick up the fish. I think he's joking. You know, yeah, a, New Jersey, a New Jersey dad loves a good joke. Plus, you can't, what, yeah, shrimp scampi, that needs to be cooked. Yeah, fried calamari. Yeah. Okay. Dang, I got taken. I got taken for a ride. Welcome, everybody, to episode 43. People are calling show. it the best one we've ever done. People are calling this, I mean, you got Early gotta, reviews are in. Early reviews are in. We're absolutely- We're dialed in. We're crushing this episode. We've got a, we're, we're gonna be covering some, uh, the, the, I think it's so cool. It's, it's the biggest heist in, in American history. The biggest heist ever in America. The biggest cash heist. We're going to be going into the details on that. And then we're also going to be covering uh, the AI scrapers. They're running out of data. They're getting backed into a corner. It might blow up. The, the whole computer might blow up. So don't, if you're watching this, get your computer off your lap. Because uh, it might blow back up. Back away. Watch it in the back of the room. Um, go, go, go into the description because there's that trading app, Moomoo, that I told everybody about. And I've been, uh, I've been using it and they got great trading tools and research stuff. And there's a great sign up deal. If you sign up, there's a great offer. And we can't say too much, but if you haven't signed up, you're missing out. Yeah, Everyone, you, everyone's getting insane stuff and you're just sitting there going, duh. Yeah. Well, speaking of duh, I also had to share this from none other, none other than Marjorie wow, Taylor really Green. really nice speaking of duh. None other than Marjorie Taylor Green. And I just, it, I think it perfectly encapsulates how dumb um, some, not only people, some people in America are, but uh, just how dumb some of the people who are our elected representatives are. She had this to say about um, the eclipse and about the earthquake. God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. Earthquakes and eclipses and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. There's a lot to unpack there. It's so. I think she's right. It's so America centric. To uh, you think she's right? I do hope our country listens and repents. Yeah, I didn't believe her until New Jersey got hit by an earthquake, and then I said, "Hold on." Yeah, a tiny, Something <laughs> a tiny little earthquake in one little part of America. I said, "Hold on, Italian Americans are in danger." Oh, that's oh oh. I I think that's uh, yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> They're in danger of what? Getting heartburn? Of fish falling Chronic out of heartburn? fish falling out of fucking things. Oh geez, fish falling out of things. I love the um, community note on this. Monday's eclipse was predicted hundreds of years ago. It will not have been caused by contemporary actions. And then earthquakes occur naturally and happen on average more than thirty times a day across the world. Although although many are too subtle to feel, it's just but really. But do they happen to mommy's little meatball? No. My... <laughs> so. <laughs> Something's up. She did. Uh, she did go on to say some stupid shit. Like uh, I also don't speaking of the eclipse, we're gonna be. Ben went to go see a total eclipse in in, oh. in Tejas, and we're gonna be talking all about that. I don't in, in the, the bonus. bonus. And if you wanna if you wanna see that, that is at benandemilshow dot com. Yeah, I, I got emotional. He's not shaking my hand. Oh, is that what you were doing? Give me a cold fish. What are you? One of them fish that fell off the thing? Hey, Emil, I've got a question for you. What is uh -huh. what is the perfect crime? Um. What's the perfect crime? Uh, volunteering to do the laundry in your house so you can um, s s 
touch your girlfriend's dirty underwears because she thinks you're doing a good chore, but you also get to sniff her underwear? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so you're volunteering to do laundry at your own house. You seem good. And for some reason, your girlfriend, you're also throwing in your girlfriend's... Well, you're doing the laundry, the house laundry. Yeah, yeah. and okay, so you're taking that opportunity to sniff your girlfriend's underwear? She's your girlfriend. Why don't she just let you take it? Well, I guess it's kind of weird. Okay, so uh, try again, though. That's not <laughs> that is a pretty good crime. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. You're getting away with it, certainly. Uh, what what's the what's the other one? What what can you think of that's a a perfect crime? Yeah. Um, you want me to just tell you? No. You know what I think a perfect crime would be? <laughs> I and I want to do that every time I'm flying. I'm thinking about it. Stealing one of the life vests from under the seat. How come more, more people don't do this? It's a victimless crime. It really is, unless you're this poor <laughs> sap sitting in that seat when it then crashes into a uh, body of water and you need it. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised more like stupid influencers and streamers aren't taking those things. And Oh, don't give them, don't give them any ideas. No, do it. <clears throat> I think you should do it. Perfect crime. Come on. Taking extra ketchup package? I, the answer is robbing a bank. Oh. I was on... I was thinking different things, I guess. Like, like I shouldn't say robbing a bank, but uh, in, this, in this case, robbing a, a, a giant... Here's the thing. I got so jacked up about this because in my mind for a long time, I've, I've been upset because I was like, crimes are... Uh, all the good crimes are done. There's so much... There's so much... Kind of like how every part of the world has already been explored. Yeah, but you can't even, there's, there's, there's cameras no everywhere, the, the technology, mm, it's mm. so easy to get caught. So I'm like, you can't, and to see these, these young men, these heroes, get away with it. These heroes, oh man, we got, I, I really do salute these men because they didn't, That's big. they didn't, so just before we get into it, they didn't hurt anybody, they didn't take anybody hostage, they were in and out, nobody even knew, that they were, nobody knew, nobody knew, nobody anything. knew, and nobody still knows, okay. So, <laughs> we got these we got the mics set up different this episode so that they're further away and and thus more sensitive and i definitely saw the lines jump yeah. when it picked it up huh? yeah all right so uh last week or rather sorry easter sunday about 30 million dollars in cash was uh, nabbed. Christ, nicked. Christ wasn't the only thing rising that that Easter Sunday, if you know what I'm saying. These boys' bank accounts. Actually, I don't think that their bank. I uh, that that's going to be part of the. This, yeah, but this these story, boys' uh, paper stacks. Oh yeah, those things are rising. Fuck yeah, yes. Or their blood pressure as they were c c pulling this thing off. So it took place early Easter Sunday in a place called a magical place called Silmar, <laughs> which is <laughs> laugh. It's the northernmost neighborhood in L.A. County. And these intrepid thieves, they think, they think they broke in through the wall first. But it turns out that they likely came in through the ceiling. And then they cracked a safe at a, at a place called Garda World. Garda World, which is, uh, you might have seen their, their black and white armored vehicles that oh, yeah. say Garda on it. You would, what, I, I would assume that that's like a Spanish-owned company. I don't know. Because Garda is like... Guard in Spanish, I think. Makes sense. I Which is funny because it shouldn't be Garda Mundo if that were the case. Garda Mundo. Garda Mundo. Why, what does that mean? We guard the world? World guard. Why would it be Garda Mundo? Because in Spanish you put the horse before the cart. No, why would it be world guard? Oh, yeah. Fuck. God, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Listen. <laughs> wouldn't it be like. My point is they're a Canadian company. Wouldn't it be like Garda Banco? That means bank guard. Yeah. Yeah, but or, so they're, 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 they're a global company. That's why, hence Mundo, Garda World. Oh, or Garda De Niro. Hey, everybody. You know, there's really no shortage of AI tools out there, but uh, there's very few of them that are actually useful, helpful, and things that you can use in your day-to-day -day life, right? You're switching from them back and forth. There's all sorts of dang products out there. They got to consolidate. You got to, you got to. So it feels like instead of simplifying your workflow, it becomes more complicated. That's okay? right. And that's the case unless you're using Notion. All that's right? right. Notion combines your notes, 
docs and projects into one space. Just one. It's and now, simple and beautifully designed. It has the power of AI built right inside of Notion and works across your entire workspace. And it's been a total game changer for my productivity. All right? That's right. You won't stop talking about how much I extra time you have to play tennis. Tennis, tennis, not tennis, tennis. And the fully integrated Notion AI helps you work faster, write better, and think bigger. Doing tasks that normally take you hours in just seconds. Isn't that nice? So here's the deal. You can save time and write faster by letting Notion AI handle the first draft. Jumpstart a brainstorm or turn your messy notes into something polished. You can even automate a tedious task like summarizing meeting notes or finding next steps. Notion AI does all this and more and frees you up to do the deep work. That's right. And we got an offer for you, gang. You might be skeptical. Well, gang, give it a try. Try Notion for free when you go to Notion.com slash Bayes. That's all lowercase letters. Notion.com slash B-A-E-S to try the powerful, easy-to-use Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. Notion.com slash Bayes. Ooh, that's pretty good. Damn. Don't you, take that. That one's mine. I'm starting, you should, a, I'm starting hmm. a new company. Yeah, well, so Garda, Garda World, they employ over, I didn't even realize this, they employ like over 120,000 people. Worldwide. Yeah, have fun sifting through that, FBI. Yeah, well, so they also operate, like I said, a fleet of, um, of armored vehicles. They're a cash management and security company. And uh, man, oh man. So these guys, they don't know how many of them there were. And they broke in through the ceiling of this place, and then they cracked a safe. And so fucking they're sick. It's so cool. It's so cool because they were talking to all these experts, and the experts said, there's no way this could have been pulled off without being planned months in advance, without them have. Did I say that right? Months in advance? Mm-hmm. Okay. That would be months in advance. Okay. It felt like my TH has turned into, I don't know what's going on. But uh, am I stroking out? Yeah. But <laughs> dude, that I don't think that eclipse was good for you. I think you got too much eclipse. I think I'm not used to the mic being so far away, yeah. so I'm kind of scared. But it's okay. I'm fine. I know. Usually, I get to hug it. Yeah, but anyway, they they broke into this safe. There should have been multiple alarms, not only between them breaking in and getting to the safe, but then the safe itself likely had seismic alarms. It, I mean, it's 2024. These things are fucking foolproof. But these boys. Boys and girls. These boys know. ain't no fools. They, they, they ain't no fools. They got in there. They said, uh, yeah, it's, um, and, but here's the, the, cool, the cool part to me. The cash that they stole wasn't just like straight from the treasury where it would be easily traceable and you'd be flat out fucked if you stole this much cash. It was cash that was already in circulation, right? So we're talking tens, ones, fives, They're going to have no idea how to track it. There, there's no way to track it. But then so the sick. other thing, the other cool part about this heist is the weight, the sheer weight of, of this much cash. A million dollars in oh, a Oh, yeah. I don't know how the fuck they're... I, I, exactly. That, like, broke my brain. A million dollars in $100 bills weighs 22 pounds. But like we said, this very likely wasn't just $100 bills. It was in all kinds of denominations. So on average, a million dollars in cash would be closer to about 250 pounds which means that $30 million worth of cash probably weighed about three and a half tons. 7,500 pounds. That's, That's crazy. What I don't I'm like, how the fuck did they move this money? I know. I think of the heist in, at the, uh, the bank heist scene in Heat, which is just, if you haven't seen Heat, it. So or good. See Thief. Is that the other Michael Mann movie? Oh my God. The, did I see that one? It's and it's got it's got uh it's got safes in it. He cracks safe. It's, it's James, he cracks safe. He cracks safe. Also, this guy's it's name James is Con. Michael Mann. It's, He's a, of course it's going to be a good movie. He's got Mann in his name. You gotta you gotta see it. It's so good. It's so good. There, I mean, Jesus no, no, Christ, thief. thief, thief is good. That's what James Con. Mm-hmm. Did they use yeah. a vacuum, like a giant vacuum, to suck all the money up? Yeah, I hope so. Some kind of industrial. We don't know. And the thing is, unless they get caught, we won't know. So I hope we never find out. They must have just had it in in like cartoon style, cartoon cartoon style, big old big old big old rucksacks or big old bags. And they must have just made multiple trips. Yeah. Just put loading them up into a box truck and ski daddling. But nobody. They went in undetected. Is that the sound of the uh, the vacuum? Very uh, powerful. I imagine it more. Yeah. Yeah. But. It likes the money. It tastes good. 
So that pres- there there's many sides to this. It's obviously the planning that went into it. Then there's the that then follows that they know how much they're taking. So what follows after that is they know they have to have a good idea of how they're going to launder all that money. Uh, what, what are those things called? Launder, l- Laundromats. Money. That is one way to, to launder money. That's how to I do To launder it. money. So I'm just, I'm turning it all into coins, putting it in the machines. When I, was, when I was researching this episode, it was on the flight, and I was Googling how to launder money. And um, I had my laptop wide open. Dude, you can't do that in tax season. You're going to get audited. Tax season? Tax season? Oh, I don't care. I'd like to see the IRS step to me. Come oh, at me, don't bitch. Don't say that. Don't come at me. Okay. Uh, or come at me. Or whichever one makes them less likely to. Well, so I thought that this would be a fun little lesson on money laundering. Oh, you're going to tell me how to do it? Yeah. Okay. Well, well there's... If, if you work for the IRS, turn this off. No, no, no. no. This, this is common knowledge. Um, so there's three steps. You, you, there's placement, where it's, the money is introduced into the financial system. There's layering, where the money so is... So placement then, would be like the laundromat. Placement would be, yeah, like buying the laundromat. Then there's layering where the money is shuffled around to create distance between the criminal and the money. So that would be, yeah, like, like inserting some cash flows into the cash business to then clean it. And then uh, the final step is integration where you're, you're fully, I might have fucked that up, but my favorite thing wow, is- Wow, riveting stuff. My favorite thing is what they call launderers. They call them smurfs, smurfing. We actually, we don't, uh, we don't like when they call us that. And smurfing is uh, when you make a bunch of small deposits into, into a bank. So you might think that you could get away with it because banks are required to report cash transactions of more than, of $10,000 or more. So you might think, oh, I'm a smart ass criminal. I'm going to just- I'll do 9,999 9, every time. Or I'll just do 9,000 or I'll do this and that, whatever. Uh, so there's another way, well, so you'll get caught doing that because there's this law called um, know your client where banks are supposed to be monitoring for, it's, it's like $10,000 and above, but also just suspicious behavior. So like if you're just some guy and you've got on average X amount of dollars in your account and then suddenly you start getting these, that's when you get flagged. So that's what these people are going to have to look out for depending on what they're planning on doing with it but there's other ways you can use mules which that's is what i do i've i've got i bought a lot of mules no no these are people <clears throat> sweetheart oh mules like a like a drug mule you know sure yeah Money mule so you you offer these poor schlubs hey i'll give you however much cash to go open a bank account in your name and then make these deposits on a regular basis and just keep your mouth shut that's one way there's also shell corporations go ahead go ahead uh, shell corporations you want to make a beach pun? No, I was going to say what, what, you, sh- they make, what they- you could do is take your uh, cash to livestock auctions and put it all in livestock. I've, what the fuck? I'd never heard of that. That sounds like a fun idea. Yeah. At least you get a cow or a pig yeah. or a horse. You buy that world's most expensive ass cow. Exactly. That stunning beast. Yeah, you can, uh, a shell company is just a, it's a company that's an empty shell. It doesn't have a business plan. It doesn't have assets. It's just something that you set up maybe with the intent of starting a business. Who knows? But the key is you're setting them up in jurisdictions that don't, uh, that the allow Cayman you. Cayman Islands. They allow you to be anonymous. So you can just set it up and then start depositing your cash. Set and it then, and forget it, really. Yeah. And then they're not going to report you because who are they going to report you to if they don't know who you are? You're a The good, president good, good. of the Cayman Islands? Yeah, the president of the Cayman Islands, John Cayman. He's <laughs> John dead. F. Cayman? John F. Cayman. He got they, shot in the head. Yeah, they shot him in Austin, Texas. <laughs> right in front of his wife. It was Dallas, Texas. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I drove over the X where he got shot, and I went, oh, Ooh, yeah, oh here it comes. Oh, there it is. Whoop. And I went, ha! like that. I didn't do that. How'd that go over? That would have been disrespectful. I don't know. I was fine. It's so long ago. I think if your head explodes all over the goddamn street, you can joke about it. That's true. It is, a, I mean, you're one and done. You're gone. So it's not like you were, I hope he wasn't in any pain. Anyway, you can also buy gems and jewels and shit. You can buy real estate. You can gamble. Then, of course, there's art. Art is like a major, major Dude, art's way the to, best one. to launder money. You take it off the goddamn wall, roll it up. Boom. You're traveling with millions of dollars. True. NFTs, there's a... Uh, no, nope, I'm out. That's, that's, me at a, that's me at a crime planning party. I'm going, these NFTs? Guys, these guys are Mickey Mouse, man. I'm not dealing with these guys. Well, so yeah, there's lots of ways to launder your money, but also uh, lots of ways of getting caught. 
and it just made me it made me think about um what these guys are out there doing they're out there just I, i'm thinking of some like professional ass criminals Things you never, th- people you never think about, man. They're out there. Well, that's the, that's they're so cool. They're got so often, thirty million dollars <clears throat> cash. They're so often portrayed uh, in media as like the coolest, handsomest guys you've ever seen. But then it's like, I don't know. When they do get caught, you're like, oh, it's that guy, the, the craziest guy you've ever. Yeah. It's like whenever there's a hitman in a movie, you're like, fuck me, that's the hottest guy I've ever seen. Yeah. Can you think of like James Bond? He's not a hitman, but. Brad Pitt in yeah. uh, in Kill Him Softly. Him Softly. Yeah, <clears throat> perfect example. Yeah, that guy in real life. Whenever you see the mugshots, just the scariest person you've ever seen. These guys, I don't know, man. Guy I would never want to be around. <laughs> Whoever these guys are, they're legitimately so good at what they do. And so, th- what the, one of the only things that cops and FBI, whoever is looking for them, can do is keep an eye out around the country for sim- around the world actually for similar um, heists. No, I'm that one they and done. Might have, I'm gone. Truly, like if you just stole thirty million dollars, you're set. But also, how do you keep all those mouths shut? I know that's a big part of it. That's which, why you just got to leave. Yeah, you go. So I thought it'd I'm be, on an island somewhere. I thought it'd be fun to look at some of the biggest. Uh, so this was up up until Easter. Uh, it or rather now it is the biggest cash heist in heist in U.S. history. You know what's my favorite cash heist in the world? The, the plundering, the plundering of the Iraq Central Bank in two thousand three, yeah. March eighteenth, two thousand three. That, that one. That was pretty crazy. You know who they think did it? They know who did it. It was, was. It was like legal, kind of. It was. It was the Husseins. Yeah, Saddam Hussein told his son on March eighteenth, <clears throat> two two thousand three. He said, "My son, you know, there." Uh, he basically knew that the 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 America We're was fucked. coming. We're getting We're invaded. Fucked. We're not going to be have access to this money. We need to. It, so they did it over days. They were just unloading, and they had like officials that he he had a signed note from his dad. That's what he had from Saddam Hussein. Like here, guys, I got a note from my dad. You know me, I'm Kusay Hussein. See, my dad. Kusay, where are you going with all that money? I don't know. Don't just worry. Tell him my, my, my dad. So they showed I up. I have in, a note from daddy. They showed up in trucks and they took about a quarter of. Uh, Iraq's cash reserves, which was a billion, they took a billion dollars. And then uh, I've read that 350 million of it was just never recovered. So it's out there. Somewhere. It's out there. Maybe it's buried. Maybe it's a buried. That's going to be our next episode, us searching for the $350 million. That would kind of be a fun adventure. Well, then two years ago, there was, uh, I'm surprised I didn't hear about this. Two years ago, there was this Brinks big rig truck coming from a Brinks jewel. is like Garda, but American. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But they, uh, sorry, I had to burp again. <laughs> they, they, they were coming down this big rig. Only two guys driving this fucking big rig. Coming from a gem, uh, a precious gems and, and a jewelry show in San Francisco. They stop like 40 miles outside of Los Angeles at a uh, rest stop. And while they're in there pissing and jerking each other off or whatever they're doing, yeah. some guys just cracked the lock. They took $100 million worth of jewels. Do you think and, they were in on it? Um, I mean, that's the, the guys thing. who were like, hey, let's go in there and piss and jack each other off. Hopefully nothing happens to the <laughs> truck, the 18 wheeler full of diamonds and shit. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't they have a fucking convoy or something at least? Or use the buddy, or I guess they use the buddy system by going into the bathroom together. But these guys were never caught. The guys who did this. Incredible. That's so fucking incredible and cool. I, I want to meet these guys. So if you guys know if this is your dad or if it's we someone. Can keep it, we can keep it quiet. Yeah, we can do one of those things where they, um, we, we'll have Dylan put a filter on your voice. Sound like SpongeBob. Yeah. And you can wear a mask. Yeah, you can wear Come a SpongeBob on, mask. And Richard Nixon masks. Um, speaking of Richard Nixon, in 1972, there was this guy. He got a couple of his nephews and uh, his brother in law and a few associates, which is really fun. I would love to have a. So- oh, we love an associate. It seems like only criminals and like lawyers have associates. They're the only ones. But in 1972, they heard through however you hear things back then, the phone. <laughs> fucking telephone grapevines they heard that uh, richard nixon had a like a slush fund at a, a bank in laguna niguel and they cracked they got they went in 
they rented a house. They flew in from Ohio. They had all their their ducks lined up, and they stole like uh, let's see what uh, th- close to thirty million dollars worth of cash and valuables. And that's back in nineteen seventy two. Back in nineteen seventy two. It's like a billion and a half Incredible. dollars today. Something like that. No, it's like 300 billion. Yeah, that seems off. It's a lot. But though. who am I to say? And you know how they got caught? They used their real names to travel, which is fucking... Amateurs. In, in, in 1972, 1972, you don't... You don't you even, show you go, oh, yeah, my name's Frank. <laughs> it's, it's never been easier to have a fake ID. They just... Yeah. <laughs> They'll let you on the plane to, like, kiss your kid Now goodbye. I gotta have a real ID. Yeah. Well, and then they um, they also attempted a similar heist back in Ohio. And also the biggest thing was... Um, My God, you made $30 million. Your Your heisting days are done. Yes, yeah, stop That's how they always it. get you. You try to do one more job. No, what really caught them was at their rental house before Airbnb. I don't know how... Again, I don't know how you even find... What do you drive around until you see a house that says for rent? Well, they uh, they ate and stuff there. And they loaded up the dishwasher and they forgot to run the dishwasher. And they pulled prints off some of their stupid dishes. Jesus Christ. What a Christ. bunch of fucking morons, huh? I think that's how the, you know, the Antwerp diamond heist? No. I, I, I don't know much about it, but I do remember this one specific detail, which was it was the perfect heist. It took, it took place in uh, Antwerp, Belgium, which is like the diamond capital of the world. Very, very sophisticated heist. And there was one guy whose job was to get rid of the evidence. That's his only, his only role after, well, I mean, he had probably a different role, but they were like, okay, all the garbage, everything that links this to us is in this garbage bag. Take care of it. He pulls over to the side of the road somewhere in like the Netherlands and just whoop, tosses the trash bag and going, well, my job's done. <laughs> and then weeks or months later, however long it was, you know, the trash bag's blown around and it blows open and then there's like papers everywhere. Some guy like walking his dogs. Of them writing down like, we are going to heist so hard at Antwerp. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, a, ma- a, a crayon drawn map or something yeah. with jewels circled. And- you got to burn that bag, my guy. Dude, all you had to do, you, be, you, be, you have so much fun just burning the bag. Roast <laughs> a marshmallow. Burn the bag. <laughs> well, some guy walking his dog stumbled upon some papers and was like, this is curious. And then put two and two together that, oh... That big jewel heist I just heard about that's been everywhere in the news. Some of this shit relates to that. And they caught the guys from that one dipshit. Can you imagine? I hope they killed them. I hope that, man. Oh, oh. Similarly, uh, this is the what last. What do you do with, like, cash? Great. Steal that. Grape! <laughs> you, know you steal that? a bunch of diamonds? Then yeah. you got to find a diamond guy? Well, you got to, like, yeah, you got to pawn him or do whatever. Pawn? I don't know. Fuck, Jesus Christ. No, you got to give him to like some kind of expert. Yeah. You got to give, you got to find Adam Sandler. You got to find Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems. Or some, some guy in the, have you seen that guy in New York? Oh, I've seen that guy. Tracks, whatever. He just like walks around with tens of thousands of dollars worth of silver and gold and goes up to people and goes, hey, uh, what do you think this silver bar is worth? And it's like $5,000 worth of silver. And people will just, they're so New York, they're just like, I don't, I don't want, don't talk to me. I don't, I don't know. And then he's like, okay. You, you Was he going to give it to them? He gives it to people. The next guy will be like, I don't know, $400. You're close, but you're wrong. Here, take a silver, co- silver, silver coin. This is worth $1,000. That's actually kind of tight. It's really cool. He also like went to the Scottish Highlands or something and buried like 100 grand worth of gold. He said, if you can find this, it's yours. I'm burying it See, right this here. This is what we got to do. We got to go on treasure hunts. Treasure hunts. Yeah. Did you ever do those, um, what were those things called? Cash? Cash? Oh, I've done cash, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Cash? Oh, oh, geocaching. Geocaching. Mm -mm. Can you help explain what that is to Emil? Um, Guy puts a sock filled with a bracelet and silly putty somewhere in a tree and then gives you the coordinates. Wow. It's basically... And then everyone races to get it? Yeah. No, like, nobody races. It's no, just... I mean, kind of. You can look on the map and say, ooh, there's a, there's a thing here, and you got to, like... It gives you rough coordinates, right? Yeah, you could, like, take something and leave something, write yeah. a little note. Oh. Yeah. It's like treasure hunt around the world. We should do that. For freaking rubber, man. We should do that. We should hide something. What are we going to hide? I don't know. Picture my butthole. No, it's got to be valuable. <laughs> Five dollar bill, twenty dollar bill. Sure, 
That actually could be pretty fun. I wish I had the balls for crime. I yeah, f- me too. I feel like that's the life I want. <laughs> I want to be on the run. I don't want to be Careful. on the lamb. What? Careful. Why? You want to be on the run? I think it'd be nice. You know, careful what you wish for. Because then you don't have to... Uh... Wait, are you... Well, there's two types of being on the run. Are you on the run from your fellow criminals who are trying to silence you, or are you run f- on the run from the law, or both? The law. I've got the money. I'm successful. How much money? Mm-hmm. And in what form? Cash? Six million dollars. Cash. 945 dollars. 940... <laughs> I got 945 bucks, and I'm like, I'm good. And then I, I, I get to... Monaco, and I'm just like, ooh, this is not as much money as I thought it was. See, I wouldn't even run that far. I would just go out to like Modesto. Why? You have to. Because get- why am I. T- the, the, that's the last place they're going to look. Go somewhere you want to go, though. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just got millions of dollars. Oh, okay. But I mean, if the cops are actively looking. Yeah, I guess I would probably want to get out of the country. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I'd probably go to like a rural ass place, not Monaco, where they're going to be looking for a guy with $6 million. That is true. That is true. FBI guys in there smoking a cigar. Oh, you you got um, fucking Colombo coming after you. I'm going to like Warsaw. Okay, what if Colombo's coming after you? Where do you go? I just leave LA County. He's got no jurisdiction. Oh, that's right. Except for that one time he got called by Scotland Yard, and the other time he was on the cruise. Cruise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I'm avoiding London and I'm avoiding cruise ships. Okay, I think I I used to think about robbing banks a lot. Surprise. And I, I was just because I, I started grappling with the morality of it. I was like, you're really only stealing from like the bank or to a, to a greater extent, the government. And if you're not like taking hostages or, or emotionally damaging someone, it's a perfect crime. You're probably going to emotionally damage someone. That's true, because the the foolproof idea that I ultimately landed on before I stopped thinking about it when I was smoking pot in college was. The way to do it, here's how you rob a bank. That's oh, you know how? <laughs> you get a fake bomb vest, or a real one, put it on, and you... Uh, Blow it up in the car by accident. <laughs> <laughs> on the way there. <laughs> no, close. Uh, you basically, you could put on makeup or something, but make it look like you've been roughed up. Like you are... Basically, you, you want to oh, go and you up, walk in and say, I'm not doing this on my own. Room. You only do it in the early hours of the morning when just the manager is opening up and you go up and you're like, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. They're going to kill me and my baby if you don't give me all the cash in the vault or whatever. And then you show and it's got beeping and stuff so that they believe it. I like this so far. It, it's pretty good. This is good. Right? And it's actually not going to be that that emotionally scarring for the person because they're going to be like, "Oh, you poor thing!" Instead of Don't oh my god, being like, "I saved someone and their baby." Yeah, you're actually doing them a favor. And then you, uh, you blow it up by accident. <laughs> <in the bag. laughs> you blow it up. No, that's why you know you make it something that's that's uh, inert or just it's just really good props. And then you say. Also, they said that there. Maybe you do a little recon. Maybe you say something that uh, that the, they'll know that the person who's holding you hostage or whatever knows a certain detail, so that like you can't fucking. If you call the cops within thirty minutes, they're gonna kill me and they're gonna kill my baby. And then you um you get the hell out of there. You came up with this. Where do you go from Pretty there, good. though? Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the problem. Is now you've got um now you've got sequential. It reminds bills. me of like. It, did you see Place Beyond the Pines? Yes. It's so stressful when he's, he's like riding the dirt bike with the money he just stole. Oh, yeah. And it's and just, just like, then he just like fucks it and crashes. And yeah. Bradley Cooper's like. Yeah. Ryan Gosling. Oh, man. What a hunk in that one. What a hunk in that one. What a hunk generally. That's the thing. I hope these guys are hunky. I used to do an impression of Ryan Gosling in the beginning of the movie Drive. Let's see it. I don't carry a gun. I drive. Does he have That's like a it. speech impediment? No, but it almost sounds like oh. it. I, I, I forgot what he says. He's got a list. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Worst impression ever. You want to see, <sighs> see my Mark Wahlberg in um, The Fighter? Yeah. I'm the one fighting. Not you. Not you. And not you. <laughs> he sounds too happy. Not you. Not you. And not you. Fuck. That no, that was pretty good, though. Yeah. Well, so the the last one actually that I that I thought was interesting was in 1997 this thing called the Dunbar heist. There was a guy who worked at this armored comp- car company called Dunbar, 
and he coordinated with five childhood friends. Always keep it childhood. You want to know these guys for a while. Yeah, but then one of the more they they stole eighteen point nine million dollars in cash, and they got caught when one of the guys lent out money to some fucking third party with the original strap still on the the money stack. What a fucking nincompoop. That's the thing. I'd be so good. I would never do something like that. That's I'm the so scary. Thorough. That's the other thing about this crew. I keep thinking of Al Pacino and Heat when he's like, "This crew's good." No, they're good because they, oh, that was bad. But because uh. they're all, they all have to be professionals. If it was like six of them, they all have to be so tight. Right, you can't have a loose cannon. You can't have a guy. You can't have a guy running off and and uh, doing crazy shit. Maybe he's an addict. Maybe he can't help himself. Maybe he's a blabbermouth. Maybe he's going to, you know, mouth off in a bar somewhere and, and give it all away. Which also means that, hey, maybe one of these guys is a little bit like the Joker in Heath, in Heath Ledger's Batman, the Joker. You think he one of kills these guys everybody. is the Joker, man? He kills everybody. One by one. One off, one off. I kind of like that. Somebody got to make a movie. You got to keep everyone quiet. Francis Ford Coppola, ditch the Megalopolis thing, this movie that he's doing. Why? Wow, I think it's going to be sick. I know. I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm seeing uh, Civil War Friday. Can't. Oh man. Oh man. I wonder if this. I wonder if they're going to make the South win this time. It's not like that. It's not like that. No. Speaking not- of, I think today is the day. Tuesday, April 9th? It's something about because I saw a very funny TikTok about uh, about the South about the Confederacy. Okay, you're gonna like is this. Is today the day that they they, they maybe like uh, wave the white or flag? I don't know exactly. I don't. I don't pay attention to that kind of shit. Um, that's a good thing that you've got it pulled up and ready to go. It is a good thing, isn't yeah. it? You're about to see it. You're going to go nuts for this type of shit. Man, that was a long segment on heists. Got me all geared. It makes me want to watch a fucking bank. You know what else is a good bank robbery movie? Ocean's Eleven. No, that is actually good, but that's a casino. It's uh, uh, Point Break. That is good. Directed by, by, by a woman. Via con, con Dios, brother. Directed by... Why do you um, say it like that? Directed by a woman. Like, because you wouldn't expect. Because why? You, why not? I would. Because you wouldn't expect like a guy fucking. I that'd would. That'd be like, uh, that'd be like, I don't know, James Cameron directing a Nancy Myers movie. Why? Anyone could do anything. I guess. Yeah, I know. I would never do that. Directed by a woman. Actually, it was directed by a woman. Fuck, dude. That's Ben leaving a date. Well, and it's crazy that it was directed by a woman. <laughs> She was actually married to um, James, James Cameron. Cameron. Yeah, what's her she name? Said he was a nightmare. Catherine, Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. That's right. Just like the tea, wow, the he, heiress he, to he, the tea company. Re- that's that's a lot. He remembered she's a woman, but couldn't remember her name. Yeah, typical. Wow, can't believe that was directed by a woman. Did you pull up your precious TikTok about I, the I Confederacy? Sent it to you. I oh, you did. You. Oh shit! Fuck. Not my fuck. precious Confederacy. What the hell? For the audio listener, it's a it's a young gal. She's got the Confederate. Uh, you know what? I gotta stop doing that for the audio. It's funny, audio listener. I'm sorry you can't see it, but yeah. I wish you could. Log on at home. God, Get I home and log on it. and check out the funny thing I just said. Ben. Holy fucking shit! Uh, okay, so AI, man. We gotta talk about AI. So, did you read Jamie Dimon's? Uh, annual shareholder letter. When did it come out? Yeah. <gasps> no, I missed it. What do you say? Well, so his, of course, his, um, his first topic. What do you think it was? Art of official. Art of official art intelligence. Of official Int- te- intelligence. Yep. Yeah. What do you say? He said. Um, he said, "Well, we do not know the full effect or the precise rate at which AI will change our business or how it will affect society at large. We are completely convinced the consequences will be extraordinary." possibly as transformational as some of the other technological in- inventions of the past several hundred years. Think the printing press, the steam engine, electricity, computing, and the internet. It's going to be bigger than electricity, everybody. He Damn. said, and he put all this ahead of, uh, you know, all of the geopolitical problems in the world. Also, Elon Musk, our favorite moron, um, <laughs> Said, my guess is that we'll have AI that is smarter than any one human, any one human probably around the, the end of next year. Okay, he thinks that all of the all this stuff is gonna be, and by the next ten years, it's all it's all gonna be doing stuff humans couldn't dream of doing. Wow, but there's a little problem. What's the problem? 
They're running out of information to they're, feed they're, the fucking thing. They're running out of data. It's think of a big hungry baby, right? Think of a think of AI as a big hungry baby. And it needs breast milk. And your wife is just tap dry. Tapped out. She's just she's squirting out puffs, just powdered milk. She's got point. all these babies. Chat GPT, Bard, uh, Llama, Llama, uh, the, all, Elon Gemini. Musk, Grok, Grok, Gemini. They're all coming to suckle at the teeth. And she's like, I got no more data for you. I got no more data. That's the thing. To make all these things, uh, to make all these things better, to, it requires like huge amounts of data. And they've, they've input it all. It, they've input things that they weren't even supposed to be inputting because they're like, right. we just do not have it. And now, not only that, they're also using artificial data, which is basically just having the AI systems create their own data to feed itself. Yeah, we'll get into that. Well, so I learned something. I mean, I kind of knew this already, but these AI models use, it started in the billions, but then very quickly transcended to the trillions of tokens. And a token is just like a word or an individual piece of a word of, or data, etc. And... The more tokens you've got, the better, the smarter. Think of, you know, like a baby. Think of a baby. Think of a baby. Think of a baby. Picture it right now. It just needs knowledge. You got to cram that knowledge in there. And it's just the more, the more they've got. So in 2021, OpenAI, they ran out. I thought that it was still going to happen. No, they ran out. And what did they do, Emil? What did they say? They started developing... Uh... Hungry ass robots. <laughs> they started developing Whisper. 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 They probably called it that because it was illegal and still is. Yeah, illegal. and they said, let's not tell anyone about this. Yeah, Whisper's a uh, Whisper's a bot that listens to YouTube videos and, and transcribes them. them into English. And it it developed uh or rather it 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 transcribed more than a million hours of YouTube videos. Yeah. Probably more. That's what people close to that like that's what they knew about. And this team included uh OpenAI's president Greg Brockman. So everyone was aware of this and that they weren't supposed to be doing it. But then they took those texts and just started feeding it into, into GPT-4 so mm -hmm. they could have this like uber powerful thing. Um, which is against the rules. It's against YouTube's like privacy policy, which says you can't use videos for applications that are independent of YouTube. Clearly OpenAI is. But the, pro the thing is, Google knew that OpenAI was doing it, but they were doing it too. And they were like, we don't want people, if we call them out, people Damn. are going to start being like, wait, YouTube, you're using our copyrighted videos to make your own large language model. We see that OpenAI <laughs> has built some kind of special straw that enables them to get milk straight from the breast, like from the side of the breast and not through the nipple. And we, we see it, but we're also doing it too because we've got our straw <laughs> slurping from the other breast. Are you guys following this breastfeeding <laughs> analogy? It goes underneath the ground into your neighbor's house. And yes. Yeah. Your neighbor's wife. And breast. they're yeah. they're sucking your neighbor's tit. Breast milk, please. Breast milk. Don't be so vulgar. Okay. <laughs> God. Jesus Christ. So that's the thing is all these companies have been bending the rules or flat out breaking them. Meta wants to acquire. They thought about acquiring Simon and Schuster. The the um. I always thought it was Schuster. Schuster, excuse me. To, to I don't know to get their to get their uh, to digitize their works because Meta and all these companies have realized one route they can take is to acquire all of these copyrighted works, be it music, text, whatever, legally. But that would take so many man hours and so many years to do. They did their fucking nerdy calculations. And realize that it'd be easier to just break the law and deal with the consequences thereafter from whoever wants to sue them instead. But even with that, they're still worried that by, like research institutes are saying that by 2026, they could be all out of high quality data to mm -hmm. feed these things. And so they don't know what else to do outside of this like synthetic information of just having the, the systems create information to feed it. Which uh, could come with its own slurry <clears throat> problems because... What if the what if the data that the AIs make are full of their own what do they call those things hallucinations? Right. And then you're just creating bad data based on bad data. So it, it remains to be seen if that'll even work. Well, you know what freaked me out the most? There was two big stories about it: one in the New York Times and one in the Wall Street Journal. And the Wall Street Journal one ended, <laughs> uh, 
they said many who study the data issue are ultimately sanguine that solutions will emerge. Villa Lobos, who's one of these researchers, compares it to peak oil, the fear that oil production could top, could top out and start an economically painful collapse. That concern has proven inaccurate thanks to new technology such as fracking in the early 2000s. It is possible that the AI world could see a similar development. He says the biggest uncertainty is what breakthroughs you'll see. And I'm like, oh, that is not the optimistic ending you think it is. Thinking of like all these tech companies be like, we need fracking. We need our fracking. That's a really good point. It is the digital version of fracking. We need to start... We need to start digging underground for more data. Yeah, where all that uh, juicy, juicy breast milk is. They're going to be making their artificial breast milk. Is is essentially to continue that analogy, that metaphor, whatever. But I have in my notes that the data created by AI to train AI is tantamount to self sucking. Is that true? Yeah, the I mean that's self sucking. Right researchers there. are saying that. That's the I. Yeah, I think that that's <laughs> what I. What What gets me though is. If the whole thing with, oh, it would be too time consuming and arduous to uh, attain copyright permission, write a fucking AI to do it, bitch. Isn't that the whole thing? Yeah, I thought your thing was so powerful. Yeah. They can like ace the MCAT. Yeah, and do bitch. all the things like, you don't even, you could just have a robo lawyer do yeah, it. Yeah, create a cute robo lawyer named Dar. Dick Lord. Dar. Dick Lord? <laughs> create a lawyer called like Larry. <laughs> Larry the lawyer, Larry the robot lawyer, whose only job is to, uh, to, at the speed of light, get fucking permission, you absolute bitch. God, yeah, I don't know. Me. I've been, uh, I've been so, like. They're asking for forgiveness instead of permission, which is a really classic, uh, that's like a, um. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on, uh, there, James, Pat- James Patterson, this, uh, that very famous, like all his books are in the airport bookstores. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Jim. Jim Patterson. You know him? Yeah. Oh, you're on, sure. you're on Jim terms. Oh, yeah, Jim, Jim. Damn, my guy's got it like Jimbo. that. But <clears throat> him and some other writers were very pissed because they were finding that uh, like online editions of their books were just ending up in these, um, were just ending up in these databases that were being fed into the, into the AI machines. And so many copyrighted works have been fed into them that now uh, they were doing, I think it was the New York Times corroborated because another AI researcher basically found that when you typed in like, when you typed in popular screenshot of a movie or like superhero movie, it would just show you basically a screenshot of like Iron Man lighting up his hand. Mm-hmm. Or uh, if you typed in like, show me a video game featuring an Italian guy, it would just give you Mario. Essentially Mario. Yeah. And that's actually their, the, these companies is pushed back to these uh, mounting lawsuits is that they're fair use because the information gets repurposed. Right. And I mean, that's like a, a clever thing. But so a, open AI kind of set the precedent by being the first ones to take all this copyrighted uh, material. And so Meta and Google can basically, I mean, part of their strategy is just saying, hey, we're just following the precedent that OpenAI already set. Um, but what really tickled my... What did it tickle? Tickled it tickle, my, ben? I don't know, the back of my thighs. Oh. Yeah. I got a sinus headache that's just going full throttle right now, by the way. Holy Is it allergies? Shit. I've had the I most know. crazy sinus pressure. I think it's because I just didn't, I didn't drink enough water today. Oh, okay. But so Google, anyway, Google needed to catch up pretty fast. And they were like, we want to put out black Thomas Jefferson pictures. We got to get, we got to figure this out. They were like, we got to get on this shit. So they got their engineers together and they realized that, because again, remember the problem is that they're running out of data. They're running out of high quality data. And these Google engineers realized they had vast amounts of data uh, available, but they couldn't legally use it yet. So they had their lawyers in 2022 broaden the terms of service to allow it to take things like restaurant reviews on Google Maps, public Google Docs, Which is fucking crazy. Yes. So at the time, the privacy policy said that the company could use publicly available information only to help train Google's language models and build features like Google Translate. But then the privacy team wrote new terms so Google could tap the data for its AI models. And you know when they rolled rolled out the new terms? They, what did they do it on like Easter? The, the team was told to, spe- 
specifically released the new terms on the 4th of July weekend when people were typically focused on the holiday. They, the revised policy debuted on July 1st at the start of the long weekend. That's fucking genius. Really good stuff. Man, that's Really genius. good stuff, Google. Yeah. They, Where'd you come up with that one? Also, nobody fucking reads those things anyway, except for a few dorks. So, but yeah, so the, the thing, I, I, I fucked up here. The, the new terms say that Google could tap the data for its AI models and build products and features like Google Translate, Bard, and Cloud AI capabilities, which was a wider collection of uh, AI tech. Man, these fucking people, dude. But yeah, this I don't know. All this, it just makes me feel so silly because I, I think there was a period of time where I was like, damn, this is actually cool. And I was seeing them be like, I'd be like, this fucking actually does sound like a Drake song. That's crazy. But now it's, it's, it all feels so silly that they've just like repurposed not only like famous people's shit, but like all of our Google Docs. So you could just have it answer me. When I ask, like, <laughs> what fucking restaurant should I... It's all so silly. Yeah, it And is. they don't even have enough. They're like, we don't, we don't know how to make it better anymore. We don't have enough stuff to have it regurgitate. Yeah. Well, because it boils down to the more, the more data, the more they can learn. And I have here in my notes to do uh, Arnold impression from Terminator 2. I really want to use the clip from the movie. But ironically, we can't use that because it would be against policies. But these big companies can do it because fuck us. But there's a clip in Terminator 2, uh, there's a part rather, where little John Connor asks Arnold about what he is, and he says, I'm a learning computer. The more, the, more I, the more I see and hear, the more I learn. And then Sarah Connor goes, and that makes you a more effective killing machine, right? And he goes, affirmative. And then John Connor goes, no, you don't say affirmative. You say, uh, what does he say? Fucking um, cool or something <laughs> <laughs> I don't fuck. I love that movie. I, I, I should be able to. Fuck. Have I ever uh, chill out? Have I have I ever <laughs> done my Mark Wahlberg in the Learning Computer? <laughs> That's a movie called The Learning. Computer? Yeah. Are you shitting me? No. There's a movie called The Learning Computer. Goes, I'm the one learning. <laughs> <laughs> not you. Not you. And not you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought that you were going to quote the part of the end of the other article where um so so the like we said the danger is that if these AIs create bad data when they're trying to self-suck that it could create a negative feedback loop. Um Sam Altman said at a recent conference, quote, it should be all right. Well, thanks for that, Sammy. Yeah. Uh let's see. Do we move on to By the way, so real fast Maybe I'll play it in the bonus, but I've been seeing, there's this TikTok account, and I, I really hate to say it, man. It creates, um, the ones that I've seen are country songs, and they're using like Facebook Marketplace interactions, and you see it on the screen, and then it sings them in a country song voice, and they're really fucking funny. They're really good. Have you ever seen the guy who did the, like, he sings the song about? Yes. The, the old ladies fighting? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It that, is very that's, good. That's my... Uh, oh, let's see. How about boo? Uh, the we're fucking, running out of time here. We should get into some... Uh, gossip? No. no. We're not going to do that. There's other shit here. We've got the... We got that... that we should do some of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, uh, another, another... See, this one, the blame doesn't fall on Boeing. There was an engine cowling. The cover came off of a Boeing, a Southwest Boeing 737-800 last week which prompted an faa investigation a boeing doesn't make the engines b it happened on the engine c that sounds like a southwest maintenance issue to me but feels a bad look it's a bad look and it also just comes in the same week that uh the news hit that the outgoing ceo the one we were talking about getting fired that everyone was like yeah like fire his ass uh he was paid 32.8 million dollars in 2023 you know uh mm. so Actually, I thought of a better heist. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. And um, patent pending, because I, I really wanted to actually, this is one of my movie ideas that I intended to write, but I haven't gotten around to it. Oh, is it the poker one? No, it's not the poker <laughs> one. <laughs> it's, uh, I like the idea of a heist movie involving someone kidnapping a prominent CEO and then placing a bet against the stock or doing something 
to manipulate the stock and then either like tweeting something from their phone or some shit like that. Because it would just be. Oh, this is basically Celtic Pride, but with uh, stocks. Great. What's what happened in Celtic Pride? Oh, Celtic Pride. Uh, Did Larry Bird do a slam dunk and then turn it's, around? It's Daniel Stern and Dan Aykroyd. They're two huge Celtics fans, and they uh, kidnap. It must be the Lakers. I don't know exactly, but they kidnap the star player on on their. That's they, a brilliant idea. Yeah. And uh, is it a comedy? It sounds like a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And they they hold him hostage until like the end of the playoffs or whatever. That sounds. There was a movie starring Wesley Snipes and I can't remember. Uh, oh, oh, Dennis Hopper. It's called The Fan. No, no, that's Robert De Niro, isn't it? Robert De Niro. It's called The Fan, <laughs> and um, Robert De Niro just fucking loves Wesley Snipes. He's a baseball player, and he uh, kidnaps his son. I think. He like kidnaps his son. I can't remember. It's one of those classic mid to late nineties thriller movies with just it's just good. And it, you know what other one I want to watch again? Arlington Road. You've been talking about Arlington Road for maybe Golly, years. Golly, yeah. Ow, my face hurts. Do you have any Tylenol? Mm-hmm. Not ibuprofen. Why Tylenol? Because I believe so. Ibuprofen fucks up my stomach, yo. Just fucks it up. His sensitive little belly. Sensitive little tummy. Um, and then th- there was one thing I wanted to talk about. The Donald Trump stock has been dropping because people are realizing that, hey, this company not only doesn't make very much money, but also loses tremendous amounts of money. And I'm ruined. I put a lot of money into that thing. Sorry to hear that. But does it matter these days? It really doesn't. If but you make money? It used to be in the, in, no, no, not that. How a company is valued. Before the days of being able to, before the days of uh, not only being able to check a company's filings and balance sheets and stuff, that information, like pre 1930s, was just not readily available. I, I don't think they had really strict rules on companies' filings. So you, it, was, it was just, it's kind of like we've gone full circle because back then it was just kind of investing on vibes and like, oh yeah, this, this company might be good, whatever. And then they have all these, uh, the renaissance of, of new laws and regulations in the wake of the Great Depression. And then you started, for the last 70 years or so, you're, you're basing your valuations, your stock purchases based on like cash flows. And there was a certain, um, there was a certain uh, calculus to it. And now it seems like that's finally being phased out in favor of just like the tokenization of a person or a meme, kind of like how uh, 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 Kate Middleton, they made a cancer token for her. Yeah, but it's that's just like, like you're, crypto. You're, that's crypto, but also the same thing happens with stocks. Look at like GameStop or AMC. It's just, I'm buying the thing. Sure. Valuation be damned. It's just <clears> because <throat> I, I'm along for the ride. Same thing with like Donald Trump. It doesn't matter what the valuation is relative to the cash flows or anything. That's out the door. You are buying Donald, like I guarantee. Oh, are you talking about how they all have like these figureheads who are basically like mascots for these stocks now? Like Elon Musk. He's sort of, yeah. It's basically like the, it seems like the, the, um, the guiding principle for a lot of people in the, in the market these days, at least in like the gambling retail crowd is, is there something that I can buy that is the, uh, represent, that represents the thing in real life? Donald Trump, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could buy a stock in the guy who's going to maybe be president? Boom, now you can. And I think that if he wins, if he wins knock the- Knock on wood, you want him to win? If he, no. Why'd you knock on wood? Because, I don't know. I thought that it was like a, I don't know, fuck. Okay, take it back, take it back. All right, let's reset. <laughs> that if he wins, not knock on wood, I bet his stock fucking skyrockets. At least for a few days, because it's like, well, now there's not even a rationale behind it. It's not like everybody's going to start using Truth Social. It's just, oh, can you buy the stock for the thing? And yeah, you can. It would be like if they, I don't know, they they fucking made a Hurricane Katrina stock back when that happened. Oh, there would have been a there would have been a shit coin. Oh, oh, absolutely. And a lot of people would have made a lot of money. A lot of people would have bought it and made a lot of money. And yeah. So there was probably earthquake coins for the for the New York earthquake yeah. or the New Jersey. Yeah, they're probably, somebody probably made one on the um, Solana blockchain. 
Quake coin. Quake coin. Earthquake coin. Uh, fat Italian New Jersey guy coin. Italian guy coin. I don't know. Seems like a good place to stop. I got to pee so bad. And you have all that pressure in your head. Yeah, I got to take a acetaminophen. And if you want to see uh, Ben be quite a baby in oh, the bonus man. episode, he's, he's going to be complaining. Oh, man. He's going to be uh, crying. You think? Shitting, pissing, farting. All those things. Apparently, I let out a couple real big farts uh, in, t- in Dallas in the middle of the night and my girlfriend was like the next morning had a real good time because she knows I'm I have shame. Like you let out some big parts. <laughs> oh no! Because I kind of remember waking up and feeling relief, <laughs> but I obviously didn't remember that I was uh, there. And um, anyway, BenandMealShow.com to hear all about uh, hear Ben's, all about Ben's Texas farts and the eclipse and the eclipse. Bye.